Hello, welcome back to our classroom. In today's video, we have one simple aim. And that aim is to solve a system of simultaneous nonlinear equations. We are going to do that by using some simple transposition, and also we are going to use some substitution. We're also going to look at how we can solve them on a graph. First up, though, let's talk a little bit about what a simultaneous nonlinear system of equations is. It's a fancy name, but all that it means is that we have two equations and one of them is not linear. Remember, a simultaneous equation system is usually, usually happens when we're solving two equations together at the same time. So in a simultaneous nonlinear system, what it means is that at least one of those equations is not linear. So in this example right here, this equation is linear, and this one is not linear. Because we are solving them together, we end up with a simultaneous nonlinear system. This kind of question usually comes in part two of the CXD paper, which used to be optional, but now that it's not optional, all of us have to try to learn as much as we can to maximize our marks. Now let's look at how we can solve a system on a graph. The equations x plus y equal 5 and xy equal 6 represent our system of simultaneous nonlinear equations. To do it on a graph, we need to first write these two equations in terms of y. It is already done here, and the graphs are already drawn. This is the graph of y equals 6 over x, which comes from this equation. And this is the graph of y equal 5 minus x, which results from this equation. Now we should say that simultaneous nonlinear systems usually have two pairs of solutions. Two pairs of solutions means that we have four numbers. So we have a pair of solution in the form x, y, and another pair of solutions in the form x1, y1. So we have two numbers for y and we have two numbers for x. On a graph, once you have drawn your graph, your solution will be where your two lines intersect. So this straight line, y equals 5 minus x, intersects with this line, y equals 6 over x. And that happens at two points. It happens here and it happens here. Now, the coordinates at this point are 2 on the x and 3 on the y. And the coordinates here are 3 on the x and 2 on the y. So our solutions are when for x and y, we can say if x is equal to 2, then y is equal to 3. xy. If x is 2, y is 3, and if x is 3, then y is 2. This would be the solution to our system from the graph. Let's look at another one. So we have these two equations that are already written in terms of y, and they are graphed. This is the graph of the curve y equal, graph of the function y equal x squared, and this is the straight line graph y equal x plus 2. Notice that they intersect both here and here. So let's look at the points. Here we have negative 1 to positive 1. So we have the point negative 1, positive 1. And we also have the point 2, 4. So our solutions are for x and y. When x is negative 1, y is positive 1, and when x is 2, y is 4. Notice again, and remember that they have two pairs of solutions. And those solutions on a graph, the on a graph happens where the two lines intersect each other. Now let's look at how we can solve these systems by using algebraic methods. Here we have a system x squared is equal to 4 minus y and x is equal to y, y plus 2. What we can do here is to take one of these equations and substitute it into the other equation. 
Since this one is already done for us, we can substitute this equation into this equation for x. So we are going to write this first equation in terms of y. Because x is equal to y plus 2, we are going to say y plus 2 replacing the x square is equal to 4 minus y. Multiplying this bracket out gives us y square plus 4y plus 4. And that is equal to 4 plus y. Now we are going to reorganize these by bringing them to the other side of the equation. So we have y square plus 4y plus 4 minus 4 minus y equals 0. That gives us y square, 4y take away y, gives us 3y. And 4 take away 4 gives us 0. So our, our equation simply boils down to y squared plus 3y equals 0. We can simply solve this equation by using factoring. So when we factor this equation out, a common factor being y, we can divide here by y, and we get y squared divided by y is y, plus 3y divided by y gives us 3 equals 0. Now we can write our solutions. y is equal to 0 or y plus 3 is equal to 0. This is one solution and the other one comes out to be y is equal to 0 minus 3. So y is equal to minus 3. Now that we have both of our y solutions, let's set up a table. So we have x and we have y. We have both values for y. y is 0 and y is minus 3. Now let's use the second equation. x is equal to y plus 2. Now if y is 0, we can substitute this value into this equation and say, if, if, if y is 0, then x is going to be equal to 0 plus 2. So x would be 2. And if x is minus 3, then x would be equal to negative 3 plus 2, in which case x would be equal to negative 1. And these would be the two pairs of solutions, or the four answers that are the solutions to this system of equations. So first, you would normally need to make a simple transposition. This one is already done, so there's no need to, to, to try it again. So we take this simple substitution here, drop it here where the x is. That leads us to this. We multiply out our brackets and simplify, solve our equation, and here we are with our solution. Let's try this on another example. Here we have 2x plus y is equal to 7, and we have x squared minus xy is equal to 6. Now we need, to sub, we need to transpose one of these equations. This equation here seems to be the simpler one to transpose. And we can say y, let's write it out first, 2x plus y is equal to 7. We want to transpose it for y. So we need to remove this 2x to the other side of the equation. That gives us y is equal to 7 take away 2x. Now we're going to take this 7 minus 2x and substitute it right here where we have a y. So let's rewrite this equation, x squared minus xy equals 6. xy minus x, so, um, beg your pardon, x squared minus xy equals 6, and we're going to do this substitution now. So we're going to have x squared minus x times 7 minus 2x, because that is what y is, is equal to 6. So we have now x squared minus 7x plus 2x squared and bringing this one over um, from that side, minus 6 gives us 0. So we can add our 2x squared and our x squared here. That gives us 3x squared minus 7x here. 
minus 6 equals 0. At this point, you can either choose to use the factorization method or the method of using the formula to solve and get your results. Um, let us check to see if this equation can be factored. If it can be factored, then A and C, we multiply 3 times 6, that gives us 18. Other numbers that multiply to give us 18 and 9 times 2 gives us 18. And this tells us that we can factor it because if we do operations on 9 and 2, we can get a negative 7 if we say 2 take away 9. So we're going to factor it by rewriting this equation as 3x squared plus 2x minus 9x minus 6 equals 0. Having done that, we are going to group and factorize. Common factor here is x. So we end up with in the bracket a 3x plus 2. Our common factor here is minus 3, which leaves us with a 3x plus 2. Writing our outside factors together gives us x minus 3 and 3x plus 2 equal to 0. Let's take it up here. This means that either, either x minus 3 is equal to 0 or 3x plus 2 is equal to 0, in which case x is equal to 3, or solving the system, 3x is equal to minus 2, and x is therefore equal to minus 2 over 3. So these are our two solutions. Now let's make up a table. x and y. x is 3 and x is minus 2 third are the two answers that we obtained. Now let's try to find the y values. We had said over here that y is equal to 7 minus 2x. So since y is equal to 7 minus 2x, we can now substitute our x values to find our y values. If x is 3, then y is going to be equal to 7 minus 2 times 3, which means y is equal to 7 minus 6. So y would be equal to 1. So if x is 3, y is 1. If x is negative 2 third, then y is going to be equal to 7 minus 2 times negative 2 third. So we substitute the number where the x is, which gives us 7 plus 4 over 3, which means 7 plus 1 and a third, which means 8 and a third. So if x is negative 2 thirds, then y would be 8 and 1 over 3. And these two pairs of values, this pair and this pair, would, will be no the solution to our system of simultaneous equations, simultaneous nonlinear equations. As you can see, they do take a while to work out. Um, let's try one more example. Here we have two systems, y is equal to 4 minus 2x, and y is equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. This sets up very nicely for us. Because if y is equal to this and y is equal to this, we can simply equate these two. So we can write 2x squared minus 3x plus y plus 1, jumping ahead of myself, plus 1 is equal to y, which is also equal to 4 minus 2x, which tells us directly that 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 is equal to 4 minus 2x. Let us reorganize this equation. Doing that, we get 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 minus 4 plus 2x. 
all equal to zero. Remember the sign changes for this one because we're adding it to the, to the other side of the equation. Also the sign changes for the four because we're adding it to the other side of the equation. All right, so we have now 2x squared. We have a minus 3x here and a plus 2x there. That leaves us with a minus x. And we have a 1, take away 4, which leaves us with a minus 3. And that is equal to 0. Let us see if this one can be factored. We would multiply our 2 times our 3. 2 times 3 gives us 6. And 6 times 1 gives us 6. It can be factored because if we combine 2 and 3 using an operation such as plus or minus, we can get our coefficient there, which is negative 1, by saying 2 take away 3. So let us do that. We are going to rewrite our equation now using 2 by 2x minus 3x to get our minus 1x here, and then we factor it. So 2x squared plus 2x minus 3x, and that gives us our 1x in the middle, minus 3 equal to 0. We group and we factor. Common factor here is 2x. So we have 2x bracket x plus 1. And here we have a common factor of minus 3. And we get x plus 1 equals 0. So our outside factors say 2x minus 3 equals 0 and x plus 1 as our bracket equals 0. This tells us now that either 2x minus 3 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0, in which case 2x is going to be equal to 3 and x is equal to 3 over 2 or 1 and a half. And in this case, x is equal to minus 1. So we have both of our solutions for the x values. Let's set up our table, our x and our y. Now we have our x values are 3 over 2, or 1 and a half, and negative 1. And we are told, based on the equation, that the y value is equal to 4 minus 2x. So y, y is equal to 4 minus 2x. We're going to substitute these numbers to find our y values. So y would be equal to, substituting this one, 4 minus 2 times 3 over 2, which means... 4 minus 3, which gives us 1. And in, this second, in the second instance, y is equal to 4 minus 2x, where x is negative 1. Then y is going to be equal to 4 minus 2 times negative 1. So y is equal to 4 plus 2 which is 6. These now are the solutions for our system that we have here. So the skills that are needed to solve simultaneous linear equations are one, that you may have to graph it if the question asks you to graph it, or the question may already have given you the graph to solve your system from. If that is the case where the system has already given you a graph to interpret, then what you need to do is look at where the two lines or the two functions would intersect, and you pick your pairs of values from those points. If the question is in this case where you get two equations to solve, then you may need to transpose one. In this case, we did not have to transpose. In the previous instance, we had to transpose one equation and substitute it into the other equation. Once you do that, you simplify your equation, you solve it, and you find your two values. Set up your table and use that table along with the other equation to find the values of the other letter.